Okay. Question 2A. State Newton's second law of motion, which relates force and momentum. We simply need to learn this one. The resultant force on an object is equal to its rate of change of momentum. The resultant force on an object is equal to its rate of change of momentum. Now we can also write that in symbols where the force F is equal to the rate of change, the change being shown by delta, rate of change of momentum, so change of momentum over time. Part B show that the momentum of an 850 kilogram car traveling at 14 meters per second is about 10 to the power of 4 kilograms meters per second. We use the momentum formula, P for momentum is the mass times the velocity and we have a mass of 850 kilograms and we're going to multiply that by a velocity of 14 meters a second So 850 kilograms multiplied by 14 meters per second gives me an answer of 11900 on the calculator. But we can see that each of the uh, numbers given to us are to two significant figures, so we'll give the answer also to two significant figures. So that is... 12,000 and now we'll change that into standard form we'll count, count back from here 1, 2, 3, 4 places for the decimal point 1.2 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms meters per second and if we compare that to the original number given we can see that it is about the same number. Part C. The car's engine produces a constant force of 1,100 newtons. Use your answer to part B. Calculate how long it takes the car to accelerate from rest to 14 meters per second. I'll use the formula that we put in the first part of the question and rearrange it. So the formula that we've got is that the force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the time. We are trying to calculate the time, so I need to rearrange that formula for time. The time here appears on the bottom of the formula. What I'll do is I'll mul multiply both sides of the formula by the time. So that gives me that the force times the time is equal to the right hand side which is delta P over delta T and then we'll also multiply that by the time. So I've multiplied both sides of the equation by time. You can see on the right hand side that I am both dividing by time and multiplying by time so those two operations cancel out. So we now have a formula that says that force times the time is equal to the change of momentum. We would like to have the time on its own. So you can see I've got force times the time. If I was to, ca if I was to divide through both sides of the formula by the force, that would give us time on its own. So I'll divide that side by the force and also have to do the same thing on the other side. The forces are multiplied and divided on this side so they cancel out. So that gives me 
final formula that the t change in time is equal to the change in momentum divided by the force. Now the change in momentum, we are going from rest to 14 meters per second. So at rest it's got no momentum, 14 meters per second. We calculated the momentum before, which was 12,000. So the change in momentum is 12,000. The force is given here, 1,100 newtons. Need to calculate that one. So 12,000 divided by 1,100. The answer is given to many decimal places, but all of our uh, all of our numbers are given to two, two significant figures. So I will give this to two significant figures, which is 11 seconds. <laughs>